With many teams adding draft picks, free agents, and even new coaches to their franchise in the offseason, the NBA preseason presents an opportunity for NBA teams to test out different players and lineups. And in the weeks leading up to the regular season, there's been some amazing preseason performances that was a telling sign of how good a player will be in the regular season. Here are some of the best preseason performances by the biggest NBA stars, and some highly anticipated performance that didn't quite translate into the regular season. Let's dive in. After having a roller coaster rookie season where he was limited to just 24 games and under 30 minutes per game, and missed out on the NBA Rookie of the Year due to injuries, a healthy Zion Williamson was determined to prove that he wasn't a bust after being drafted first overall in the 2019 draft. In the first game of the preseason against the defending Eastern Conference champion Miami Heat, Zion played for 33 minutes, scoring 26 points on 8 of 13 shooting from the field, grabbing 11 rebounds and dishing out two assists. In the final preseason game, he scored 31 points on 12 of 22 shooting and grabbed 9 rebounds and had 2 assists in 33 minutes of action against the Milwaukee Bucks. He also hit 63.6% .6 of his free throws. In that 2020-2021 preseason, Zion averaged 28.5 points on 57.1% shooting, 10 rebounds and 2 assists per game. During the regular season that year, he played in 61 games and went on to average 27 points on 61.1% shooting with 7.2 rebounds and 3.7 assists per game. The New Orleans Pelicans, who finished 11th in the Western Conference, did not make the playoffs, but that didn't matter much because the Pelicans found out just the kind of talent they had on their team. Zion tied Shaquille O'Neal for the most consecutive games, 25, with at least 20 points on 50% shooting in the first two seasons, surpassing legends like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Will Chamberlain, and Karl Malone. Steph Curry is arguably the greatest shooter in NBA history, and unlike most NBA players, he is always involved in the preseason, as Golden State Warriors head coach Steve Kerr frequently needs him to run the team's offense and allow the new players to build chemistry with their star point guard. During the 2019-2020 preseason, Steph Curry was without Kevin Durant, who was out with an Achilles injury, and without Klay Thompson, who was out with a knee injury from the previous season when they lost to the Toronto Raptors in the finals. All eyes were on Steph to lead the Warriors in the absence of KD and Clay, and the preseason was the perfect time to see what he could do without them. In the first game of the preseason against the Minnesota Timberwolves, Steph Curry played for 25 minutes, scoring 40 points on 73% shooting, grabbing 6 rebounds, dishing out 6 assists, and recording 2 steals in a block. He managed to average 26.8 points per game on 50% shooting, 4.3 assists, and 2.8 rebounds per game in the preseason. He carried this performance into the regular season, averaging 20.8 points on 40.2% shooting, 6.6 .6 assists, and 5.2 rebounds per game. Unfortunately, Curry was limited to just 5 games in the 2019-2020 season before breaking his left hand early in the season against the Phoenix Suns. But just two years later, along with Clay and Draymond, Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors are once again NBA champions after an amazing season and defeating the Boston Celtics in the NBA Finals. James Harden's time with the Houston Rockets may have ended on a bad note, but everyone can agree that the nine years he spent with the Rockets were the best of his career, and the 2016-2017 preseason marked the start of the Beards transition from shooting guard role to the point guard position. Coming off a season in which he led the league in total points scored and demonstrated that he preferred more time with the ball in his hands, the preseason provided Houston Rockets head coach Mike D'Antoni with an opportunity to test James Harden in the point guard position, following the addition of more shooters like Ryan Anderson and Eric Gordon to the Rockets squad, and Harden did not disappoint. In six preseason games, James Harden averaged 20.2 points on 46.6% .6 shooting, 10.7 assists, and 6.2 rebounds. In a game against the New Orleans Pelicans in the 2016-17 preseason, Harden recorded 26 points, 15 assists, and 7 rebounds. Seven of his assists in the game came off three-point shots, as the positioning of Ryan Anderson and Eric Gordon provided him with multiple options to pass out to the perimeter. Also in that preseason against the New York Knicks, he scored 28 points on 63.6% .6 shooting, grabbed 6 rebounds, and dished out 11 assists. These preseason performances as a point guard carried over into the regular season as he led the league in assists per game and finished second in MVP voting behind Russell Westbrook when he averaged a triple-double that season. 
James Harden averaged 29.1 points on 44% shooting, 11.2 assists, and 8.1 rebounds per game during the 2016-17 regular season. He finished the regular season with 22 triple-doubles, becoming the first player in NBA history to have at least 2,000 points when he had 2,356, 900 assists, as he had 907, and 600 rebounds, as he had 659 in a regular season. He led the Rockets to the second round of the playoffs, averaging 28.5 points on 41.3% shooting, 8.5 assists, and 5.5 rebounds per game before losing to the San Antonio Spurs. Kevin Durant is arguably one of the greatest scorers in NBA history, and his first preseason games in the league before his official debut in the league was proof of the great things he was going to achieve in the league. Drafted as the second overall pick in the 2007 NBA Draft by the Seattle Supersonics, Kevin Durant's stats as a 19-year-old were already proof of a future MVP. In a preseason game against Kobe Bryant and the Los Angeles Lakers, KD scored 19 points on 40% shooting from the field and 50% from beyond the arc, as well as getting 3 rebounds and 3 steals. And despite spraining his ankle in a preseason game against the Golden State Warriors, he still averaged 18.8 .8 points per game and 40% at the 3-point line. At the end of the preseason, he led all rookies in points per game and was second in steals per game. After the preseason, Durant recorded 18 points, 5 rebounds, and 3 steals in one block in his NBA season debut, and by the end of the regular season, he led the Sonics in points and steals per game, averaging 20.3 points, 4.4 rebounds, and 2.4 assists per game, joining LeBron James and Carmelo Anthony as the only teenagers in NBA history to average at least 20 points per game in a regular season. Earlier in the NBA, it was rare to see big power forwards that were ball shooters, but Rashard Lewis was one of the few expectations. In his 16-year career, the two-time NBA All-Star had eight seasons as a power forward, where he ranked in the top 20 for made three-pointers. He also holds the Supersonics record for most three-pointers made, and ranks 22nd all-time in three-point scoring. And following the addition of Ray Allen to the Supersonics roster in the 2002-2003 season, Richard's performance wasn't affected despite both of them being perimeter players, and his 2003-2004 preseason performance was one of the best in NBA history. Even though Richard Lewis missed two games at the start of the preseason after being diagnosed with plantar fasciitis in his left foot, he averaged 35 points per game on 86% shooting and also averaged 80% at the three-point line. However, he only averaged 17.8 points, 6.5 rebounds, and 2.2 assists per game during the regular season. His field goal percentage dropped to 43.5%, and his three-point field goal percentage dropped to 37.6%. And the Supersonics were greatly impacted, as they missed the playoffs after finishing the season with a 37-45 record and finishing 12th in the Western Conference. The Toronto Raptors were so bad in the 2004-2005 season that they finished 11th in the Eastern Conference and traded their superstar shooting guard Vince Carter to the New Jersey Nets for 35-year-old center Alonzo Mourning, who refused to join the team and had to be bought out of his contract. In an attempt to rebuild the team, the Raptors selected Charlie Villanueva with the 7th overall pick in the 2005 NBA Draft, and the rookie immediately got to work in the preseason, showing why he deserved a starting spot on the team. Villanueva averaged 18.2 points per game in five preseason games, shooting 50.7% from the field and 60% from beyond the arc. On top of that, he averaged 5.6 rebounds and 14 assists per game. In the first game of the 2005-2006 preseason, he sent the Raptors into overtime by making three clutch consecutive free throws with less than two seconds remaining. By the end of that game, he scored 24 points and was able to grab seven rebounds. And in another preseason game against the Portland Trailblazers, the rookie scored 22 points on 8 of 14 shooting from the field and 4 of 4 from the three-point line as he led the Raptors to a 178 victory. During the regular season, he set the Raptors' rookie record for most points, 48, in a single game, as well as finishing second among rookies in points and rebounds and third in minutes and block shots. Even though he finished his rookie season with 12 double-doubles, it wasn't enough as the Raptors failed to make the playoffs after finishing 12th in the Eastern Conference and resulting in him being traded to the Milwaukee Bucks during the 2006 offseason. And that's our list of the top preseason performers. Did we miss anything? Which of these performances did you think was the most interesting? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, remember to like and subscribe for more NBA content.